human rights are a Western creation, respect of human rights is against my traditions and culture, human rights violate national sovereignty. These statements are some of the most common objections whenever discussing human rights. There are reasons for these objections and they should be treated seriously. They can come, for example, from very painful experiences of colonialism or from ideological beliefs. They also come from the fact that human rights as a system of international law only started in the second half of the 20th century and has led to an impressively fast development. Three things are important to know when it comes to the international human rights protection system. Ideals and values, which are the base of the system, have not been invented in the 20th century. Looking at history, we can find examples of either a right being mentioned in some code and people were fighting for it. Think about the French Revolution or the Magna Carta, or the Hammurabi Code, or else. These examples show only our limited historical knowledge. And there are many more. The idea of protecting human rights began to receive ever wider acceptance in the 20th century. Especially with the creation of the League of Nations and the International Labour Organization. The Charter of the United Nations, signed on the 26th of June 1945, reflected this belief. Another important document that followed the Charter is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is groundbreaking and serves as the most important instrument for protecting global human rights. The committee that was charged to draft the declaration started with a review of national constitutions in the world to map the human rights to be included. It is true that the United Nations was not a big organization in 1948, only 46 member states as opposed to 193 member states today. But the committee did not only include representatives of the West. History is often challenged when looking at the human rights system. We need to decide for ourselves that human rights are representing the values we want to stand for and that we can and should always make it better. Now, did you know that we have three generations of, three of rights? Of course, these categories are not clear-cut, but they are useful to classify different types of rights. Most rights fall under more than one category. The right to express one's opinion, for example, is both a civil and a political right. Civil and political rights are known as the first generation of rights. They include rights such as the right to participate in government and the prohibition of torture. The second generation of rights includes social, economic and cultural rights. These rights concern how people live and work together and the basic necessities of life. The third generation of rights are known as solidarity rights. These rights are collective rights of society, such as the right to sustainable development, to peace or to healthy environment. Some collective rights have already been recognized in particular under the African Charter on Human and People's Rights and the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. Knowing these rights are useful and should guide any action to fight against hate speech. <laughs>